you change the question of the personal statement from why do you want to be a doctor to show me why you're ready to be a doctor. Application Renovation Season 3, another episode for you. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you, Dr. Gray? I am good. It's a very timid response. You're like, oh, <laughs> I'm scared. Uh, uh, I, I hope that these uh, these sessions are helpful and not just me beating up on students. So um, <laughs> I would love to hear from you uh, kind of your journey so far so that, that students can under, understand it as well. I think this is your second application cycle that we're going to review, the, the second yep. application. <laughs> Um, what happened first application cycle? Any interviews first application cycle? No. So no interviews first application cycle. Um, nothing major changed. I graduated. I rewrote, revamped everything, added some letter of recommendations. Okay. Um, and then this application cycle, I got two interviews and I'm on two wait lists for those two interviews. You got two interviews this time, which is great. What do you think changed from first application cycle to second application cycle to get two interviews? Um, I applied earlier because um, the last application cycle, I took the MCAT in like late May. So it kind of pushed everything back. Yeah, that's um, I think my personal statement, I did a lot. I took a lot more time working on it. Um, I had a lot more editors. I think it was just a lot um, more put together this time. So I think that helped. And then I increased my number of schools, which, you know, odds can always help a little more too. So, (laughs) all right, well, let's go ahead and dive into your application. We'll have plenty of time, hopefully to look at it and get answer some questions for you. So right off the bat, again, first thing I love to see is an early application. That's great. Um, I love some of the language here, some Polish, Spanish, English. Uh, it's always a tricky one. If you get someone that's like, ooh, I have fluent Spanish, I'm going to have an interviewer speak to you in Spanish the whole time. So it's always <laughs> um, no big issues demographic wise, which is great. So we get into school and um, we can see lots of passes early on. I'm assuming those are AP, which they are there. Um, those obviously just for students watching, those don't affect a GPA at all. And we start off school with some B's. You're like, oh, this is a little bit different than high school. (laughs) Um, but then it looks like you figured some stuff out and then a couple more stumbles. Um, and so grades look decent and we see that, um, you have year after year an ever increasing GPA, which is great. There's no Mm -hmm. senior classes on here. Did you graduate in three years? Is that why? Um, No, there should be some. There's not there. Senior. There's a couple. So I had, um, I was supposed to graduate a semester early. So I had like a lighter schedule my senior year. Um, So there's not as many. Okay. That's cool. Oh, so you, you have the senior here. Um, yeah, as, as all other. Okay, so just no science classes senior year, it looks like. Because mm-hmm. um, that one's pass fail, which is why that's not counted. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So your GPA is okay. It's not great. Okay. It's mm-hmm. good that it's going up every semester or every year. So we have a nice upward trend going. The question at the end of the day is, is it enough? And and that's always yeah. going to be uh, the question. Obviously, this application cycle with two interviews, at least for two schools, it was enough. Mm-hmm. You back it up with a solid MCAT score. So um, if there's ever doubt of like, well, is the GPA good enough? Are you a good enough student? And you go and crush the, the MCAT, which is great. I don't like to talk about the MCAT balancing a bad GPA, but it just helps kind of ease some fears potentially. Okay. So great job with the MCAT. How did you do so well on the MCAT? I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I, I was studying while taking like some of the core classes like biochem and anatomy. And for me, I think that helped just because it was kind of like a double, um, like back check, making sure that you under remembered everything, understood everything. A lot of the memorization for anatomy and uh, biochemistry, I didn't have to do multiple times because I just had it that semester. 
Um, and I also had some friends that took it around the same time as me. So I think studying with other people really helped me too. Study groups. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Now we get into what I love to talk about, which is the the actual core of the application where your application will make or break your application cycle. Yeah. And so first thing right off the bat, anesthesia assistant. I'm like, oh, awesome, right? Great clinical experience. How did you find this job? How did you how did you get this clinical experience? Yeah, so um, it was a private practice and the surgeon that owned it really liked teaching students. So he had like an externship program that had pre-med and pre-dental students. Um, so it was a very good opportunity. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. So I see that it stops March of 2020, which is pandemic start. And I look yes. at the like I look at that activity and go, it's it's a job, right? It's anesthesia. Mm -hmm. It should have continued, but potentially if this was an outpatient, maybe the surgeon stopped doing elective procedures, whatever. And so I can kind of understand that. So there's just maybe some questions around why it stopped when it's a job and, mm -hmm. and a required job kind of con to continue. Yeah. Um so from a clinical experience standpoint, lots of hours, good time span, lots of stuff going on. And then we get into the description and mm -hmm. you can see right here, I just wrote basic job task of as an anesthesia assistant, this is what I'm doing, right? I'm responsible for this. I'm responsible for that. Like, I don't need to know all that stuff. I want to know about who you are, not about mm -hmm. your job. Um, and then you get into your most meaningful experience and you tell a story and my heart melts. And I'm like, ah, oh, story, I love it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I would love to see a little bit more personalization, right? Who's his? I, I would love to see a, a patient name, a pseudonym. Okay. I would be careful about abbreviations, right? So anti-cube uh, for, for ACF. Someone mm -hmm. reading this may, might not understand what you're talking about. So be careful with abbreviations and jargon. I, I would say anti-cubital fossa as ACF isn't a standard abbreviation yeah. uh, like EMT would be or ER would be that you could just use, right? IV, obviously, um, you can use. So just be careful with that. Um, but you, you tell a good story, which is great. And then you get to the end and you try to sell me of, ooh, I had to jump on the learning curve fast and make a conscious effort to master the skills I needed. Now I can apply this attitude to the rest of my career. It's like, just tell me the story and 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 how it impacted your life. And you're like, look at me. I had to master these skills. I'm ready to master anything. I'm ready mm -hmm. to be a doctor. And it just, it ruined the whole thing for me. Right? <laughs> so you don't need the sales pitch at the end. So good job with the story, reflection, stay away from that sort of reflection. Yeah. Uh, human anatomy, peer mentor. You told a story, a really good story here. Love it. Didn't You didn't try to sell anything here of like, oh, being a tutor is going to help me be a doctor in this way, right? You didn't do that for this one for some reason, um, which is good. You have this learning and leadership experience. You marked mm -hmm. it as leadership. I don't think it's leadership. You just went to a conference and got to learn and listen. Uh, I, I think the name learning in leadership threw you off and you're like, oh, this is leadership. So to mm -hmm. me, I would look at this and go, this isn't leadership. I, I wouldn't mark you off for it in any way. I would just be like, eh, it's not leadership. Um, so good experience there. Research, lab, um, you get into the sales pitch again. Right, of like, ooh, this requires attending to small details and MRI scans, and it grew my computer and data analysis skills. Like, that's not what I'm looking for in a medical school applicant. Right, mm -hmm. if I want a computer nerd, I'll go hire a computer nerd. <laughs> I'm looking for people who are going to change the world. Right, uh, that's that's what I want. And so yeah. this whole experience description, you can see what I highlighted is sales pitch. You focused on these are the skills that I learned, and that's just not important for this uh, for the application. Okay. Um, you have community service here, medical, clinical, pediatric oncology volunteer, and this is a tricky one. This looks like it's very similar to child life, what, what a child life job would be. Um, mm -hmm. and a lot of schools don't like that as clinical experience because they think it's exactly what you put here is playing. Yeah. Is that really clinical experience? And so I think you could have focused more on 
the actual interaction with the patient and not necessarily, hey, we just played all day long. Yeah. Um, and so just, just something there. Again, good story. Your activities, for the most part, were good. They focused on stories. Um, some sales pitches here and there, but you mm -hmm. had the stories. Global medical training volunteer, just the focus on gratitude, I, I tend to have students stay away from. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's a very easy trap of like, oh, I want to be a doctor so I can be thanked and so that people appreciate me. Yeah. Um, so just stay away from that kind of stuff. Again, the, the, the kind of sales pitch and here's how it's going to help me in the future takeaways, I just don't think work for mm -hmm. these activity descriptions. I don't think they help me understand who you are. So saying here that it introduced me to the intervention techniques for addiction and I was able to find them pertinent information for the design and implementation for future interventions. It's like, okay, great, right? Uh, I don't know what that's supposed to tell me about you. Okay. Uh, same thing for being this uh, Kaplan brand ambassador. I was able to build my public speaking and networking skills, right? Again, I, I don't care about your skills that you think you have. I just wanna know who you are, the impact that you've had on people. Okay. Um, artistic endeavors. And you have your Carolina vibe dance team. And I will tell you that dance was the downfall of your application. <laughs> um, <laughs> as, as we will, uh, as, oh as we will get to in your personal statement. Okay. Um, but here for, for dance, you get to your most meaningful remarks. And again, you're, you're trying to sell, like, look at how dance has, helped me be a better student or look at how dance has set me up to be a good physician in the future. Mm -hmm. I found the human body's capabilities fascinating, right? What is that? I like science, <laughs> right? The super cliche, I like science. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's taught me important skills, dedication, hard work. This is very common for students to take athletic endeavors, which dance is, mm -hmm. and translate that into dedication, hard work, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And okay. ooh, those are all skills necessary to be a doctor, I think, supposedly. And so yeah. I'm going to tell you that I have those skills because I was a dancer. Mm -hmm. um, and so just just lots of, of sales pitch here that's just not needed. Okay. We have uh, Phi Mu here uh, choreographing a piece with over 20 girls, raised over $1,000 for the Center of Excellence for Eating Disorders. This is a great example of showing impact through numbers. This is perfect for these types of experiences where it's mm -hmm. not clinical, but you have some potential to show impact through numbers. Okay. This just shows me if you're able to choreograph a piece with over 20 girls, well, guess what that is? That's leadership. That's organization. That's communication skills. Mm -hmm. You didn't say all of those things, right? How am I supposed to know you have good communication skills if you don't tell me you have good communication skills? Well, yeah. you just told me you choreographed a piece with over 20 girls. That tells me everything I need to know. And okay. the fact that you raised a lot of money shows that you, you have this follow through and impact and, and that alone is enough to show me who you are. Okay. Yeah. Physician shadowing. You have some? Great. Many years ago, why don't you have any recent shadowing? Um, I think during school, I just, it kind of got pushed to the back burner. And then like, once I started working clinical jobs, I was like, oh, I work with physicians every day. Um, and then COVID hit. So it's been kind of just like a couple of things. Yeah. Um, I should have done more. Um, okay. So consistency, right? A lot of people will go, oh, 60 hours, that's enough. But, but when it, when it just, just to fa finish the thought for students watching is it just, it looks like a checklist when mm -hmm. I, when I see that and you're like, okay, I got my shadowing done and let me move on to the next thing. So that's always just okay. a, a thing to avoid. Okay. Marshall's title boxing sales associate. Again, you're trying to sell experiences here, trying to sell traits here. Like I was an efficient, uh, I maintained an efficient storefront through organization and customer service. I, I don't need to know that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So just the sales pitch stuff there. And then NCI student intern, again, just a basic list of tasks here of what you did day in and day out. And then we get to your personal statement. Mm -hmm. So 
you start off here, good morning, Mrs. K, I said, releasing my hand, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay, a story. Love it, got it, good. I, I'm excited. The takeaway from the story, though, is that you're an adrenaline junkie. <laughs> you talk about adrenaline rushing through your body, the rush of energy and exhilaration. So to me, I tend to have students shy away from, I want to be a doctor so that I can, I can have this rush of energy every day. Okay. A lot of medicine is super boring, right? Okay. It's exciting <laughs> for you because you're a pre-med student. And you're like, oh, this is amazing, right? I remember those days. Yeah. Um, and, and obviously in, in, in medicine, you have those days as well. But but for a student to rely on those, which I, I assume you're relying on those because it's in your personal statement. You spent however many weeks and months crafting a personal statement, and that's what you focus on. That tells me that's what you're relying on. Okay. And... I, I don't like that. I, I shy away from that because I'm afraid that once you get into this, it's not going to be as adrenaline inducing <laughs> an experience that you're hoping for and you're not going to yeah. be happy. Okay? okay. So stay away from the adrenaline stuff. And then you get into, ooh, I love rush and adrenaline. This is what I'm made for because I danced. And here's where I yeah. said dance is the downfall because you were trying to tie everything to dance. And I'm not sure why you did that. Can you explain that to me? I think, um, I, I feel like we always hear like, you need something unique. You need a unique background, a unique story. And like, you know, all pre-meds volunteer, all pre-meds do clinical experiences. So I was trying to kind of pull something that maybe not everyone has um, and make it more interesting, but backfired. <laughs> and and yeah. it's, it happens every time, right? And I see this. Yeah. When you try to stand out in your personal statement, that's where students typically fall flat on their face. You mm -hmm. stood out because you have dance here in your activity yeah. list, right? This is great. I see, I see dance as a big part of who you are. But then to mm -hmm. tie the adrenaline that you had dealing with Mrs. K or Miss K to the the rush and energy that you had with your dance performances, just okay. So, right? It doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. It's just not logical in my mind. To why do you want to be a doctor? Right? I want to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. Right? If you think about it, what you're saying is I want to be a doctor because I had a rush of energy and exhilaration while I danced. It doesn't make any sense, right? Uh, and so, yeah. uh, and, and that's just typically what happens, right? And and then what you basically did was here's a list of skills and traits that I think are important to medicine, that are important to being a good physician, and let me show you how I had those skills and traits as a dancer, right? Mm -hmm. So you're like, oh, I had to maintain composure of my teammates. Um, our physicians embraced problem solving. And creativity to make decisions for her care. The same skills needed to choreograph an intricate piece. So you, you basically were like, here's a skill that I know is necessary to be a doctor. And I already have this skill because I danced and I choreographed dances. Yeah. And, and that's just, that's not the message that I need. I need, why do you want to be a doctor? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I get to this point. I'm like, okay. I'm not sure why you want to be a doctor yet. I can see that you're exhilarated and you have adrenaline rush uh, with some interactions. And then you get into this, your dance career progressing and taking care of emotional and physical well-being of your dancers. And you have this story of someone who has this migraine. She's got a test she's studying for. And, and I'm not sure why you're telling me this to this point. And then I get to, oh, this is why you're telling me it. You're trying to say, hey, look, I'm basically a doctor already. <laughs> like, I'm attuned to people's care. I know what they need. I'm ready for this, right? You should accept me. Like, don't even accept me. Just give me the diploma already, <laughs> right? And so I'm like, oh, right? Very common mistake of like, I know what it's like to be a doctor. I'm ready for this. Let me show you how I was in a situation that basically I'm already a doctor. Okay. I want to know why do you want to be a doctor? And you're focused on here's why I'm ready to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. Two very different 
focuses. Okay. Okay. And then you have here, although dance served a significant factor in my decision to become a physician, right? And I have this big why. Why? I still have no idea why you went down this path to explore yeah. healthcare. Okay. I have no idea. And that's such a big part of an application is I need to understand your journey. I don't care that you think you're ready to be a doctor. I don't think that you think you're amazing at listening to people and, and attuned to their needs. Mm -hmm. Right? That doesn't mean you should be a doctor. Right? I want to know yeah. why you want to be a doctor. And I'm not there yet. And, and then you get to the earliest memory I have of medicine affecting my life was my mother's breast cancer battle. And I'm like, oh, okay. So there's some exposure to healthcare. I mm -hmm. want to understand that impact on your life. Okay. If you read my book, did you read my personal statement book? I did, okay. yeah. <laughs> so if you read my personal statement book, your mother's breast cancer battle is likely potentially your seed. Yeah, okay. And you don't focus on that at all. Like, I want to understand what got you to start thinking about healthcare in some way. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like your mother's breast cancer battle did. And then yeah. I want to understand the the exposures and experiences that you had that continue to support that decision and, and to really confirm that decision in your mind. Mm -hmm. And all I know at this point is, hey, I'm a dancer, therefore I have all the skills necessary to be a doctor. Yeah, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then the this last sentence here, last few sentences, even though I have only assisted the physicians, I find myself taking personal responsibility for a patient's well-being. right? It's that same message of I'm ready to be a doctor. I'm basically doing it now. This obligation yeah. for the health of others has motivated me to fill in the gaps of my knowledge. I like science, right? Super cliche. I frequently ask our physicians about their experience in applying diagnostic, surgical, and communication skills, and hope one day to use, utilize them myself as a physician. You're basically selling, hey, I am super motivated to learn this. I ask doctors questions. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. All right, and so again, I want to know why you want to be a doctor. I have zero understanding of that right now. Okay. You have the, the MCAT score, your GPA is potentially borderline, although you have a nice upward trend. Mm -hmm. It looks like you have the experiences. You have some good stories in your experience descriptions, some selling parts in there too. And mm -hmm. then your personal statement destroys the whole application for me. I have such trouble with the personal statement. I thought it was bad last time. It's <laughs> just as bad the second time. <laughs> so read the book again. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll send you a copy of my new book, the, the pre-med playbook guide to the medical school application process, which has maybe a couple different angles on a personal statement that may yeah. connect for you. And then potentially seek out some, some one-on-one -on -one advising for a personal statement as well to, to really get yeah. going. Um, I, I think, I think the personal statement is, is really the thing that's holding you back. Okay. Um, and then you look at your school list, and I thought your school list was great in terms of private, public, et cetera. So you had mm -hmm. lots of, of private schools on here, which uh, as someone applying public out-of-state schools just typically doesn't work. And so good good yeah. school list in terms of public, private. Okay. Questions? I guess like the reason, like I read your book, I get the seed and everything, the yeah. story. I know those are the big things, but I think I was having trouble like, because I wanted to start with a story, like, you know, the attention grabbing, but then I, I think it was like the transitions maybe that like kind of transitioning to the seed, but then I kind of feel like dance was my seed. Cause then that's, or one of them. Cause that's when I became interested kind of in the human body, but then that's, I love science. So then I don't, I think that's why I had so much issue. How, with how old were you when your mom had her breast cancer battle? Well, I was in, it was 2008. So I was like 10 years old, which is why I have trouble writing, you know, because I, I don't remember a lot of it because I was little. Um, 10 years old, you'll remember everything as a 10 year old. <laughs> I know, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. So I don't know. That's why I didn't know if I should focus a lot on it because I was like, well, I was 10 years old. Like I didn't really know what was going on, you know? Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I don't know. 
So in, in my mind, what's missing is really mm -hmm. the, the core of what I think a personal statement should be, which is the, the journey of exposure, the seed, okay. and the watering events, what you did on top of that. Okay. I, th I think, right, if, if I were to, to just tell you what I think, I think you mm -hmm. read my book and you said all these personal statements are the same. I'm going to be different. <laughs> okay. And, and that's yeah. a mistake. All right. Yeah. Personal statements are going to be very, very similar. Mm -hmm. But they're going to be unique to you because they're your specific journey. Not, okay. Not every student applying to medical school was a 10-year-old whose mom had breast cancer. Yeah. Not every student applying was exposed to the types of patients you were exposed to and the specific patients you were exposed to and had the specific reflections and takeaway and impact that those experiences had on you. That's okay. what makes a personal statement unique. It's, it's, yeah. it's your story. Where you tried to kind of go off the rails was like, well, I'm going to be different, right? And you said it earlier when I was like, why did you yeah. focus on dance? You're like, well, it's different, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Is, is you focus on dance and you change the question of the personal statement from why do you want to be a doctor to show me why you're ready to be a doctor? That Questions? Um, do you think I should apply again right away? <laughs> like this cycle again? I, I would because I, I think in terms of, so, so there's two questions. Yes, mm -hmm. I think you should. Your your MCAT is great. You have this upward trend in your GPA. You have the clinical experiences. I think potentially you should try to shadow some more. And you already have exposure through the clinic where you work, right? Yeah. I don't know if you're working full time or part time, and if can you am, can you stay yeah. a little bit of extra time, or can you basically some of your time just say this is shadowing because I'm basically just standing around watching. Yeah. You yeah. just <laughs> subtract some hours and extract them out. Okay. Um, uh, I, I think you can apply this cycle. I don't think there's any huge drastic holes in your application that you mm -hmm. need to work on other than the story, which is, okay. is just essay writing. Yeah. The, the caveat to that is, well, your GPA is a little bit lower. Should you take some more classes? Yeah, that's where I'm kind of torn because I, I mean, I don't want to spend the money if I don't have to, especially if I'm applying again and spending that. Yeah. Um, but I know my GPA is not great. My, my gut tells me that your GPA is good enough, right? I always talk about, is it good enough? I think yeah. it's going to pass filters. Your MCAT score definitely is strong. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think from an academic standpoint there are going to be a lot of questions. Okay. The, right. the question at the end of the day is going to be why, why do you want to be a doctor? And you haven't answered that. And so it's, it's hard, right? I could say, go ahead and apply this cycle. You have the perfect personal statement and the GPA still <laughs> prevents you. <laughs> and, and that's just the game of, of applying to medical school. Unfortunately, is you don't know what yeah. medical schools are looking for in terms of GPA. You do have that okay. upward trend. I like that upward trend. Is that enough? That's the question at the end of the day. I think it is. If you apply mm -hmm. to enough schools and the right schools, uh, I think it's good enough to to get you where you need to go. All right. That's encouraging. <laughs> good. Thank you, Dr. Gray. You are welcome. Any other questions? I don't think so, no. All right. Well, good luck. Keep us updated. All right. Thank you so much.